Hello and welcome to the second of my white balancing tutorial videos. If you haven't seen my first video yet, I recommend you check that one out because in this video we will be skipping over a couple of things such as finding uh, which software to use as well as converting your video files to make them compatible in Vegas. In this video I'll be using Vegas Pro 19 as well as Just Color Picker. So for anyone who's new, white balancing is just the process of taking a video or a photo and making the things that should look white actually look white and the things that should look black actually look black. So let's import our video. In this case, I'll be using a .avi video, so there's no need to convert or change it for Vegas Pro. Now, because we're working in video and we will be sampling parts of the video in this preview window, as you can see, it just shows up here. We kind of want to optimize our Vegas layout a little bit. So this sound bar over here on the right, you can just close out of it, don't need it. Uh, we can drag our preview window to be much bigger because it will make the process easier as we go along. In addition, this preview quality, we want to make that as good as it can be, ideally best and full. You probably may not be able to notice it depending on YouTube video compression, but keeping it at best full uh, will improve the video quality as you're taking color samples. And lastly, we want to make sure in our options preferences video. If you're doing a group effort with multiple people, you want to turn GPU acceleration of video processing off. The reason you want to do this is if you share your project files with someone else, if your GPU is different than theirs, uh, it can actually cause some differences in what you see. So like I said, just keep that to off. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'll be going through the video, uh, we'll say blind. So I haven't looked ahead, I haven't made a plan. Uh, so this would just be like if you were to do a video uh, and by me doing it blind, I'll talk through my thought process and why I make the decisions I do. Uh, to give you, the viewer, a better understanding on how to white balance. Now, because this is an episode of television, uh, it does have an opening that is standard across the episodes. So I will be skipping the opening part just because uh, it is something I've seen before. And maybe if you're doing uh, a television series, uh, you might find a way, for example, to do the opening once instead of looking at it every single episode. So the opening should end, I believe about, yep, a minute 40 in. So I wanna just kind of split the opening away from the rest of the video. So what I would do is just press S. The S key will split my video. Now what I've done is I've actually done something wrong on purpose. And that is I split my video in the wrong spot. Now here's how I know that. If you look here in the video track, you can see I split the video right about here. Uh, and there are little pictures that preview what the video actually is. And with Vegas, it will always have the leftmost uh, picture is the first frame and the rightmost picture is always the last frame. So as you can see, you know, this preview of uh, Goku standing in front of the earth uh, I've actually split that between these two sections of video. However, it is fortunately not that hard to fix. So what I'm going to do, I'll zoom in a little bit to the point where this should be fine to the point where moving my, actually I think I want one more. Yep. One more. Okay. To the point where moving uh, by pressing the left and right arrow key, I move my selector frame by frame. So as you can see, I'm going left one frame, what, and now going right one frame at a time. So in this instance, I actually split my uh, shot four frames too early. So here's how you fix it. On the uh, right side, you click and you just drag it. To right here. The reason I picked right there, as you can see, that's where the uh, opening actually ends. Then you take here. Now you're not, I'm going to do this wrong first. You're not doing this to drag it to the right. That is not what you want to do. 
you want to take the edge and extend it to the right. Now just, just to check that everything's right, if I go all the way to the left, as you can see, I'm still at frame zero. I didn't drag it to the right, I extended it to fill that gap. So by now when you see the little video preview in Vegas, you know that you know you didn't split it at the wrong part. Now how close I like to actually go, if you want, you could always zoom in so you see everything frame by frame. That's fine. Um, I do think it is a little close and it's hard to tell what's, you know, what's coming up ahead. So I like to zoom out just a little bit, but still to the point where by pressing left and right, as you can see here, I'm only advancing one frame. This is very important because if you're zoomed out too much, where you're advancing, in this case, two frames, uh, you might miss when to split your video. So I'll zoom in once. Now I move one frame at a time. Okay, so now that I've separated the opening, my goal is to identify some white and black points to use for white balancing. So I see a character here has some white, uh, maybe some black areas in the shadows. So I'm just going to go ahead a little bit. And as you can see, he's coming closer to us. So maybe right here. Okay. All right, so I'll start here. So I'll click my effects. I have my color corrector. Okay. I like to do custom. And again, how exactly you optimize your Vegas layout is up to you, but I like to do it like that. Still gives a good amount of preview video while also seeing my tools. So we disable that because if you sample and your correction is changing the colors, it will keep throwing your sample off. So we'll disable that at first. Low complementary color is for black. So right about here. And high complementary color is for white. So right about here. Now before I enable it, what do I expect to see? Well, for the black area here, I want to get that under 20%. The reason why is because the black saturation levels can change a lot. Um, so under 20% looks good visually to a human. They, you know, they wouldn't notice really any kind of color uh, tint or saturation to that. Now for the white area, as you can see, it's about 7%, 8% now. I want to get that under 5%. So if I see 5% or higher, I know it should be changed. If I see 4% or under, then I'm pretty satisfied with that. So now that we have our samples, let's take a look. So obviously the image colors did change a little bit. Let's see, for the black area, 12%, 8%. Like I said, it does change a little bit, but as long as you can get under 20% anywhere, that's pretty good. Now for the white area, that's perfect, 0%, 1%. It's basically perfect. We can check another area, this hair, also 0%. Um, you know, maybe well, that's a different kind of shadow. In fact, I'm actually gonna sample the black point again. Um, right here, let's take a look. That looks better. That saturation value, the second one in Just Color Picture, we want that as low as it can be. All right, so it's pretty good. So now I'm gonna press Control S to save. So we'll call it the episode number. And now we have that saved. So you wanna you know save as often as you can. So if anything happens to your video, uh, you're not redoing a lot of things. Okay, now let's look for the next shot. Okay, so right here. So when to split the shot? Not here, this is one frame too early. This is when you wanna split the shot, the first frame of the next shot. So that's split. And again, if I wanted to check, I could zoom in and I can see you know, the white flash is before and the attack effect is after, so that's good. So let's take a look. 
Now notice here, we still have our old uh, color effect setting that we applied. This can save a lot of time rather than, you know, splitting all your shots first and then correcting. So anyway, the white area in this energy uh, looks pretty good, 2%, 3%. I can't really find a good black area. Mm. No, so I think I'll leave this one as is. And look for the next shot. Okay. So again, not here, too early. This is where I want to split. Press my S key, makes a split. Let's see if any, oh, so something happened here. And it looks like we have a black point to sample. Mm, so like I said, it changes a lot, but I'm seeing areas under 20% saturation. So this will be another shot that I don't touch. Let's keep going. Okay, change again. Press my S key here. Now let's see. Okay. So this should be white up in his hair. And this area, while not necessarily black, uh, looks like it shouldn't be colored. It's maybe really a dark gray, but you know, there shouldn't really be any color besides that. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, looks better. Yep, saturation's down. And saturation's down, perfect. I'm gonna press Control S to save here. And let's keep going. All right, changed again. One thing I wanna say too, uh, the little previews down here, the pictures you see occupy multiple frames, so you can't always uh, look exactly um, you know, you can always trust the leftmost one and the rightmost one, but the other ones, you know, you don't know exactly which frame they are. So you wouldn't split here, even though it looks like it's where one part ends and the other begins. Uh, just, you know, take a look at your window, make sure you're advancing one frame at a time. And right here is where you want to split. So I press S and as you can see, it adjusts itself accordingly. Okay. So here I have uh, a very obvious black and white point to sample. So we'll get here for black and we'll get this ribbon for white. Okay, let's take a look, 25, 18, okay, and 2%. Okay, so let's say, you know, for this black point, I'm not really satisfied with it. You know, I'm thinking I could do better. Well, one way you can do that is go to your plugin chain, color corrector, add, and then okay. And what you get is a second color correction layer where you can apply more changes. So really you do the same thing. Disable first, find your black point, say right here. Might as well find my white point too, even though I did a good job before. Let's take a look. Now that saturation is 0%, 8%, is even better than before for the black area. And for the white area, it was already pretty good, but is even better here. So this is pretty good. So we'll save, close this out. Now the reason why I close out uh, the effects every time is to not get mixed up. It can be somewhat common. Let's say, you know, I'm working on this scene and you go over to the next one now I'll, I'll do a somewhat silly example and you make a change, but you don't see that change. And you're like, Hey, what's, you know, what's going on? Why isn't it changing? But what you didn't realize is you're actually changing something from a different uh, scene. And that can, you know, cause frustration as well as destroying some of your hard work. So make sure to undo that. So I just like to make sure every time I'm on a new shot, I close out the setting before and open a new one. So let's keep going. Okay, we changed again. Close this out. This is where I flip. Press S. Now let's see. OK. 
Okay. Okay, right. Uh, we'll wait for the pupil to get a little bigger. All right, right here. So I have white and black area. Now here's what's good about making the two layers. Is often the piece of media you're working with, even though the white balance levels might change shot, or shot by shot, they'll have a similar kind of problem, uh, whether that be either too red or too green. So in this case, I'm only going to change the second color correction layer. Right here for black. Oh, it's actually pretty good already for white. Now let's see for black, 3%, 6%, so good. And for white, you know, 0%. So notice what happened here is I now have two color correction layers to make it look really good, but I only had to change one at a time. This is a great way to save time, again, rather than splitting all your shots first and then coming back to color correct. Okay, let's do another scene. Split right here. Let's see, whites look white. I will probably leave this scene as is. Okay, we'll do one more for now. Split right here. Okay, I like here. The reason why I like this image more than this one is just because there's a little bit of like a pink glow from this energy attack. So I like to avoid, uh, you know, glowing areas. So same thing, only have to touch the second layer. Let's get a black and let's get a white. Okay, good, good. Simple enough. Uh, and that's really it. I would, you know, continue to go along uh, the entire episode uh, just like that, making corrections, ensuring I save as I go along. Uh, you know, this is the kind of process that isn't necessarily technically challenging, uh, just takes a lot of discipline uh, and focus. So you're not, you know, taking shortcuts or skipping steps. And the number one piece of advice I can always give is if you're not sure, just check. If you think you didn't do a good job, just bring your mouse over, take a look. Okay, looks good, looks good. And that's how you know you did a good job. All right, best of luck with your work.